Hey, it's Rob from the Bob Sphere, and I've got Study for Obedience by Sarah Bernstein. Okay, in short, this is Wicker Man meets Wittgenstein. Okay, let's let's go into a little bit more detail. Is there a plot? Not really, but I'll I'll try summarize it, and I have to be a little bit quick today. Okay, so what happens is that the narrator moves to the country to help her recently divorced brother. And when she starts settling into this country, weird things start happening. Uh, animals start dying. The, then, um, yeah, there, there's a phantom pregnancy of a dog. Things like that. Then what happens is that the brother returns and then things get a little bit weirder in a way. So the blurb says that this is a book about complicity, and in a way, yes, it is. But I also saw it as a book about language. The reason why these problems happen is because the narrator is not able to communicate properly with the townspeople. This book is written in a very, well, I didn't have to say very, but it's written in a verbose manner. So if she actually talks like that to people, I can see them not understanding I'm not saying that they're stupid, but when you use polysyllabic languages and you're not direct, then it can confuse. And there's a lot of that in there. This is a gorgeously written book full of, like I said, polysyllabic language, little twists and turns, but it's poetic at times. Okay, I went into a little detour. So because of her ability not to communicate properly, she is blamed like a kind of witch figure. For all these happenings. Then she discovers, like Wittgenstein has said, that when she is silent, things actually go a bit better for her. Not much, but they do improve. Do I recommend this book? I don't think everyone will like this. This is kind of a Goldsmith's um, novel, uh, light experimental. But if you like, and this is on my first reading, so if I read it some more, I would definitely be able to peel more and more and more layers. So if you like books like that, I highly recommend it. Like I said, it is written beautifully. So that means it's been two books in a row in this Booker shortlist where I have marveled at the prose. Actually, the four books now I've read had, were, had great writing. But this, this stands out. This is like sentence over sentence of greatness. It's, it's testing the capabilities of the English language. But it's also got a very rich and multi-layered plot which reveals itself and rewards the reader with more and more readings. So it could be about complicity, it could be about language, it could be about traditions, it could also be about the ugliness and beauty of nature. There are bits where there's evocative descriptions of uh, flowers and rivers, etc. But then there's also rapids being ripped apart and ducklings being stolen. And the people are like that too. They have their nice, their calm way of living their life, but then they burn effigies and things like that. Hence, The Wicker Man Meets Wittgenstein. It's a great book. I liked it. It, got, it gets a full 10 out of 10. I can see why people may not gravitate to it, but give it a chance. Okay, and that's the fourth book review.